1 Samuel 13. Continued war with Felicia. Saul was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 42 years. Saul selected 3,000 special troops from the army of Israel and sent the rest of the men home. He took 2,000 of the chosen men with him to Michmash and the hill country of Bethel. The other 1,000 went with Saul's son, Jonathan, to, G to Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. Soon after this, Jonathan attacked and defeated the garrison of, Philist of Philistines at Geba. The news spread quickly among the Philistines. So Saul blew the ram's horn throughout the land, saying, Hebrews, hear this, rise up and revolt. All Israel heard the news that Saul had destroyed the Philistine garrison at Geba, and that the Philistines now hated the Israelites more than ever. So the entire Israelite army was summoned to join Saul at Gilgal. The Philistines mustered a mighty army of 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and as many warriors as the grains of sand, of sand on the seashore, seashore. They camped at Michmash, east of Beth, Beth Haven. The men of Israel saw what a tight spot they were in, and because they were hard-pressed by the enemy, they tried to hide in caves, thickets, rocks, holes, and cisterns. Some of them crossed the Jordan River and escaped into the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul's Disobedience and Saul's Rebuke and Samuel's Rebuke Meanwhile, Saul stayed at Gilgal, and his men were trembling with fear. Saul waited there seven days for Samuel, and Sam, as Samuel had instructed him earlier. But Samuel still didn't come. Saul realized that his troops were r rapidly slipping away. So he demanded, bring me the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And Saul sacrificed the burnt offering himself. Just as Saul was finishing with the burnt offering, Samuel arrived. Saul went out and, to meet him and welcome him. But Samuel said, What is this you have done? Saul replied, I saw my men scattering from me, and you didn't arrive when you said you would, and the Philistines are at Michmash ready for battle. So I said, The Philistines are ready to march against us at Gilgal, and I haven't even asked for the Lord's help. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering myself before you came. How foolish, Samuel exclaimed. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God gave you. Had you kept it, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom must end, for the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people, because you have not kept the Lord's command. Israel's Military Disadvantage Samuel then left Gilgal and went on his way, but the rest of the troops went with Saul to meet the army. They went up from Gilgal to Gibeah, Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. When, Sa when Saul counted the men who were still with him, he found only 600 were left. Saul and Jonathan and the troops with them were staying at Geba in the land of Benjamin. The Philistines set up their camp at Michmash. Three raiding parties soon left the camp of the Philistines. One went north toward Ophrah, in the land of Shual, another went west to Beth Horon, and the third moved toward the border above the valley of Zeboam, Zeboam, near the wilderness. There were no blacksmiths in the land of Israel in those days. The Philistines wouldn't allow them for fear they would make swords and spears for the Hebrews. So whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, picks, axes, and sickles, they had to take them to, to a Philistine blacksmith. The charges were as follows, a quarter of an ounce of silver for sharpening a plowshare or a pick, and an eighth, ounce of eighth of an ounce for sharpening an axe or making the point of an axe goad. So on the day of, of the battle, none of the people of Israel had a sword or spear, except for Saul and Jonathan. The pass at Michmash had meanwhile been secured by a contingent of the Philistine army.